So far I have 3D scanned various objects with my smartphone and other cameras using photogrammetry methods. But what is it like to scan object with a real 3D scanner that is intended for that use? Let's find out. Hello boys and girls, my name is Olli Huttunen, and this time I'm going to do a product review of Creality's 3D scanner that they have sent me to test. Creality is a Chinese company best known as a manufacturer of 3D printers. But related to the topic, they also have 3D scanners in their product range. This model I got to test from Creality is called CR Scan Ferret Pro, and its special feature is wireless scanning. The scanner is delivered in a nice zippered carrying case where it is convenient to transport and take with you on a work trip. The most important part is, of course, the scanner unit itself, which is partly built in a tight aluminum shell. This scanner is technically so-called an infrared scanner that includes an infrared projector and two infrared receivers, which are practically infrared cameras that detect the depth of the surface where the projector beam hits. In addition, the scanner has also a normal camera that captures the colors and the textures of the objects being scanned. This model also has this separate bridge unit that wirelessly transfers the scanned data to the mobile device via Wi-Fi connection. Setting up and connecting the parts of the scanner is relatively easy, but even though this is called a wireless device, you still need a few USB cables between the parts. Luckily, all the necessary cables are included. There are rechargeable batteries in the handle, so it needs to be connected to power the wireless bridge unit. And we still need a second cable to extend it, it's so it will also power and transfer the data from the scanner unit. So the setup is a bit of a mesh. As a whole, the ferret scanner is fairly compact package when installed, and when held by the handle, it initially feels like a dynamic scanning device. With the help of the small tripod attached to the handle, it is easy to leave the scanner down to the table to stand when it's not in use. For wireless scanning, a holder for a smartphone can also be attached to the handle. But it's completely optional do you hold the phone in this holder. Since it is a wireless device, you can just as well place your smart device somewhere else, where you can easily monitor the scanning process. For example, I noticed that using an iPad to monitor the scanning is just as successful using a wireless Wi-Fi connection. Another way to scan is to connect the scanner directly to the desktop computer. And it's done with the long USB 3.0 cable that is delivered with the package. But then let's talk about the scanning itself and the scanning program, because the actual application is the core of the whole thing. Creality has created an application for both Android and iOS platforms. And in addition to this, there are also versions for desktop for both Mac and Windows operating systems. The Creality Scan app for the smart devices is very straightforward. The application opens directly to the quite long info listing, which goes through in detail what the scanner is capable of and what kind of a scan should be done with this device. In my opinion, this amount of information is a bit excessive, especially right at the beginning when you open the program. But fortunately, you can turn it off, so you don't have to scroll through it every time 
when you start the application. In order to make the wireless connection work, you need to go to your device's Wi-Fi settings and search the scanner's network there. After this, the connection to the device opens and you can start the actual scanning. During scanning, the application shows a preview image from the scanner's color and infrared cameras on the left side. In the middle, it presents a point cloud in real time, which it gets formed from the surface of the 3D object. When the dots are green, you have successfully scanned a piece of your object. You can move the scanner itself and, as it were, paint the object by forming dots on its surface. Or you can use the turntable and turn the object yourself. One way or another, the purpose is to make the entire object stay in the relatively narrow beam of the scanner and collect the shapes of the object from as many angles as possible. A turntable is a good tool for this purpose. The scanning process with the ferret is quite interesting. It takes some time to get used to its sensitivity. Especially keeping the right distance can be tricky. I noticed that using the scanner is easier the bigger the object you scan. Smaller objects are challenging for this scanner. For example, I didn't manage to scan this Captain Haddock figure, which is about 9 cm tall. But all objects bigger than your palm will do better. Before you optimize the point cloud into a mesh structure, you can decide whether to let the application fill any gaps and holes in your model. This is especially necessary if you want to make model for 3D printing. Then the model must be so-called watertight. The scanned model can be saved in three different 3D file formats. The STL format is intended for 3D printing. Traditional OBJ is common format used to process model in several 3D programs. And then you can also shave just point cloud data in PLY format. When creating a mesh structure, the scanning application realizes a surprisingly dense and accurate polygon structure. Depending, of course, how high quality the setting is set at the beginning of the scanning process. A trace of such precise level can be used when implementing designs that requires precision, but in other 3D work and model processing, the dense surface mesh can be very heavy and slow down the use of the program. Fortunately, today's fast graphics cards can display very detailed and dense surface models. In the last step of the scanner program, the application calculates the colors it scanned and builds the textures for the model. Good lighting is important for textures. The texture image is better the more even the lighting is when scanning the object. Lighting that does not create sharp shadows or light spots on shiny surfaces naturally produce the best final result. But after doing a few different scans, the purpose of this device started to become clear to me. The first scanner is at its best if you want to produce something that you can use as a 3D design aid. For example, if you want accurate models from which you can take a measurement and design fittings that fit well into an existing mechanical part, or if you want to make 3D printable objects, the Creality Scanner can naturally produce them. But if your purpose is to scan, for example, a 3D character that you could use, for example, in animation or as a game asset, then this device is not the best choice. The textures and texture mapping it produces are simply not at that level. For animation, 
game and visualization purposes, you will get much better results using traditional photogrammetry methods. And of course, this scanner also follows the basic rules of 3D scanning. It cannot make models of highly reflective or transparent objects. But as a wireless scanning device, the ferret is quite clever. The connection between the mobile device and the scanner works well, and wireless scanning is more comfortable than scanning via computer with the connection cable. There are no big differences between the computer software and the mobile application. Both play on the same principle and produce a similar end results. Using an infrared scanner was new and interesting task for me, and I want to say big thanks to Creality for sending me the device to test. If you are interested in this scanner, I will add the links into the description, and if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's continue spinning among the 3D objects. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Happier than ever, like I never thought forever was you